Hello all. About time I got back into doing some videos. Gonna talk about a first phase of a project that I've been working on for a while. It was based on John Park's Circuit Playground Password Vault, uh, which is uh, on Adafruit's website. I'll include a link in the description down below. But basically, the vault he, he developed a vault, a vault using a Circuit Playground, which he could store 10 passwords into and then bring them up and have them enter automatically into whatever program's asking for the password at the push of a button. Thought this was pretty cool and but I wanted to enhance it a bit and he he didn't have any display you had to remember which one of the 10 buttons did which password and I have a lot more than 10 passwords. I started off with a prototype using the uh, tiny lab prototype device it was a Indiegogo startup. It's actually how I got initially introduced to the Arduino environment. It's actually a pretty neat little device. Has the the center part here uh, is basically a Leonardo Arduino and uh, it has basically a bunch of shields built in and displays. So it's got a 2 by 16 I think LCD display here and a four digit seven segment display it's got a battery for a real-time clock it's got a real-time clock on here it's got some flash buttons leds a, a little buzzer uh, an sd card slot a potentiometer um, a rotary encoder it's got a, um, a header for an xb a wireless communications a relay it's an all-in-one package to start uh, playing around with the arduino environment uh, what i did was basically took the general ideas that John Park had developed for a password vault and ported it over to the uh, Leonardo uh, on the tiny lab. So here you can see uh, one advantage right off the bat is I've got a display to give me some feedback whereas John Park just had LEDs. So uh, the display is right now reading locked and if I put in uh, so that one of these are I have four buttons down here so I can enter uh, basically a security code to unlock the device. So if I enter the right combination of these buttons, it goes ahead and unlocks it. I can lock it again by hitting the, the fourth button. And you can see if I put in just four random numbers um, or four, a pattern of four buttons, it doesn't unlock it. I have to actually put in the uh, pre-programmed code that will unlock it. Once I've unlocked it, I can uh, scroll through the list of sites that I have passwords saved for or systems or whatever I want to use them for. So you can see I can just first hitting the first button scrolls me down, hitting the second button scrolls me back up. So I can go to the uh, Adafruit site for instance. Now if we um, go to Adafruit's website and I click on the uh, sign in button and then make sure that my mouse is in that spot and go ahead and hit the third button indicate telling my program that this is the uh, site that I want to enter the username and password for so I click it once and it comes back and says okay I'm about to enter the username hit it again and it hits the end the enters the username into the field go down to the password field and click it again and it enters my password. Now I can just click on sign in and with any luck there I am I'm logged in. Now the next phase uh, um, I'm, I'm going to rather than using the built-in buttons and display uh, I'll probably uh, try using some external devices that uh, so that ultimately I can package this up as a standalone device and not connect it to my tiny lab. And when I'm looking at devices that I can use, uh, let me flip back. Uh, basically, the any Arduino that's using the AT Mega 32U4 will most likely support the HID, USB HID necessary to uh, the, the the library necessary to do that. Basically what you'll be using is this HID library uh, in Arduino to send out the keyboard signals. Uh, but this 
as you see here, it, it works with 32U4 based boards. It also works with the Do and the Zero, which are uh, more advanced um, microcontrollers. Um, I don't think they're even using the Atmels. I th they're using a different um, manufacturer processor, much more powerful. Um, it makes me wonder if also the Teensy, which is a pretty fa a powerful version of the Arduino, would also work. But the ones I'm pretty sure will work if you uh, are the Leonardo, obviously that's what the Tiny Lab is, the Pro Micro from and the Lilypad from SparkFun. I, those those both should work. Assuming I don't know how many ports the Spark but, uh, the Lilypad has. I think I need seven pins. Um, and and um, I'll need the um, SPI pins, uh, S clock, and mostly to talk to my the display I plan on using. So nine nine port nine pins in total. Um, so the obviously the circuit playground, assuming it has enough pins, and I think it probably does. Uh, John Parks used that, so that um, that one obviously has the HID support and will be an option. The Pro Trinket, uh, I think, is also another good option. It's a pretty cheap option, ten bucks for Pro Trinket, and uh, it has the uh, the serial that I'll need for the for my display options, as well as uh, plenty of um, GPI opens. And the Flora, I think it. Would fit on the floor too, because the floor has got a header for the uh, MOSI, the serial output, and um, and then a lot of like the RX and TX can be used. I don't think those are used by the USB. If they are by used by the USB, that could be a problem. Um, and but the and then you get four general purpose over here, five, six, and I think these can be used as general purpose too. So I think you could pull it off on the floor as well. So those are all the options. So yeah, so this is the first version. Ultimately, we'll hopefully have a standalone device that uh, can enter our passwords. Okay, back again. So I've uh, updated my take on John Park's Circuit Playground Password Vault uh, by adding I'm still using the Tiny Labs uh, Arduino Leonardo uh, f as the processor, but I'm not using any of the Tiny Lab peripherals. So I've added three new devices to my Tiny Lab. The first is this four button membrane keypad from A Adafruit. Uh, the next is the Nokia 5110 monochrome LCD. 10 bucks from Adafruit, but uh, they this one they seem to go out of stock of this quite a bit. So I actually ended up getting it uh, off eBay. You can see they're they're pretty easily available and they're actually a bit cheaper. Um, you do have to wait quite a bit because they generally come overseas. Uh, so sometimes it will take a month. And of course, you don't get any of the great documentation that and support that uh, Adafruit supplies. And then the third item I've added is uh, this. From also from Adafruit, the uh, breadboard-friendly 8-bit log logic level shift. And I didn't need 8 bits, but uh, I had gotten these earlier uh, in anticipation for having to do some level shifting. And uh, actually, I think the other option is a 4-bit, and I did need more than 4 bits. So the 8-bit makes sense. Uh, but basically, this allows you to connect 5-volt signals to a device that's looking for just 3-volt signals. Now, if you're interested in the details of how this is hooked up or of the code I'm about to go over, um, I've posted this Fritzing-like diagram as well as the Arduino code up on GitHub, and uh, the links are down below. So once again, the, uh, the function is very similar. Uh, you enter a, a code to unlock it codes uh, programmed into the Arduino so if you put if you put in anything but the pre-programmed code it just stays locked and 
you can't access the passwords. But if you put in the pre-programmed code, you unlock it. But now you can see, rather than just seeing one of the sites that's in the database, um, I can see a screen full of them, six of them. And when I scroll down the list of sites there, scrolls down, I can scroll up. And if I hold the button down, scrolls faster, and do the same in the back. And once again, once I select the site I'm interested, I can do, it'll tell me it's ready to send it. And then if I click on the sign in button, go ahead and hit the but third button again, it sends it. I've added a tab after the uh, username prompt this time, so it automatically goes to the next field. And then I can hit the password, and the password goes in. And uh, I can now click on Sign In, and, and off we go. One of the other features of the software is that after a five minute, I believe, timeout, uh, the screen will automatically lock. Uh, go back into the lock state and of course you can manually put it into locked by pressing the, the four button. So this is the I, a cleaned up version of the Arduino code. I, I, my usernames are generic username and passwords here obviously. Um, but so basically the pin code this is the thing that unlocks it. It can be any length just whatever string you put in this array you have to match it. Um, then, then here are the list of sites that you've got use password uh, passwords in, then the uh, usernames that go along with it, and finally the uh, passwords that go along with it. Now the passwords I'm storing, uh, I'm using this uh, progmen uh, indicator to not store in um, the, the, um, glo the global variable space because as you can see down the bottom um, there's there's not a lot of spare space left, uh, <clears throat> so I'm storing the uh, the passwords in the program space using the progmen space. If I database gets much longer, I'll probably have to move the usernames, and I could uh, well I could actually the the names of the uh, sites are already over there. So if if I add many more uh, usernames, I'll have to add the um, the username to the progmen space as well. But for the time being. The, uh, the, just those two arrays are stored in the uh, program space and the rest are in the global variables. Um, so the, there's a little routine that fills the, the six screen the, script, the six lines on the screen. Uh, typical setups, just setting the, the pin button modes and doing some initial setup. Um, the loop goes through checks to see if it's locked. If it is, it looks for button push. If it gets a button push, it sees if they match the pin code. Uh, and then, then deals with scrolling up and down as requested. And then if you select, once you've selected the username, it, it, it sends them out to the key, over the keyboard using the uh, HID keyboard functions. So the next phase of this is going to be to go ahead and choose an Arduino device that I can run this code in and attach these the three peripherals to and make this a standalone device. Ideally I'm hoping to get it into something something like this sitting on the desktop with the USB cable going out and connecting connected to the PC, the, uh, the keypad sitting on one side and, and the LCD on the top part. Just put that in there. So that's what I'm hoping to do. Um, I need to decide on which Arduino to use. So obviously I want one relatively small. So that's uh, part one and we'll uh, Hopefully I'll come back to you with it before too long with this finished up and uh, packaged into a uh, nice little package, standalone package. Thanks for watching.